Hey guys. Thank you so much for joining our live today. We'll be going live with Liz from the Conscious Kitchen. Um, we are practicing to go on every Wednesday to just catch up with you guys, catch up with everyone, and let us know what's going on. Um, today we're going to be going live and talk about um, podcasting. So stay tuned for that. Just waiting for Liz to jump on. Hey, Liz. Hello, everyone. Hello, Laura. Hopefully we get some people tuning in to learn about podcasting today. Yeah, so excited. Got some really cool notes for, to, for us to share about um, starting to podcast. How are you, yes. Dave? How was your weekend? Good. I took the weekend off. I just like, it was supposed to be me and Chris. It was our anniversary weekend. So we were supposed to go camping and just be like out on our own. But the weather was crazy here today. I mean, this whole weekend, it's been like 70 per mile per hour wind. So oh we just got vacation and stayed home instead. Ah, super cool. Yeah. Uh, how was your, how was your Valentine's Day? You had a good one? Yeah, it was chill. We got to go to a restaurant here. Um, but I think since I think going out for Valentine's Day is just really cra crazy and hectic. Um, and definitely for next year, stay home and make a great meal for yourself and just save money. And do that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. we did have a really good, um, like, nice dining experience from this Spanish chef. His name is Alex Garcia. So that was really nice. Nice. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hey. hey, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining. Shayna, Mama Disco, what's up? Thank you so much for joining us. We're practicing um, getting in on every Wednesday just to keep, keep everyone updated about what's going on with us and also give back some helpful tips too. So today we're talking about podcasting. Yep. So today we're doing a little podcast 101. What do you need to know? All the insider details. Laura and I have been podcasting now for three years, almost three years. Three so we years so much we've gone through we have 30 episodes 29 episodes it's like we got a lot to share let's jump yeah. right in. all right cool <laughs> so it's nighttime for me and it's morning for you guys so if you're joining us please grab a, some coffee or tea or whatever and um take some notes so um yeah so we're going to talk to you guys about um a bit about the podcast uh, Liz and I wanted to start the podcast like if we've been podcasting for three years I guess we've been wanting to pretty much generate this idea of, it took us about a year to create a podcast um, you know we kind of created like all these different types of excuses or we just just didn't start it just took su such a long process so you know mm -hmm. just knowing that if you do want to create like any type of media platform or anything it does take time and it's okay <laughs> you know if you don't just jump off the bat or you don't have you know funds you know, to do it. But I think podcasting is actually a really great way to, you know, tell stories, tell, you know, give out information, connect with people. But like, I think it's a, such a, it's a cost efficient type of media, I feel like, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it requires, it doesn't require too much of an investment. It all depends on how much money you're able to spend on a microphone, how much money are you able to spend on these little types of like technical things that, that you require. But once you have your mic and your setup, you're good to go. It's like, now it's just your time. And Time is money, and so it, that is also cost something. But if you're down to just really commit to it, then yeah, you're you're good to go. Yeah, I love that. Oh, um, also, Liz, um, yeah. I love. I want you to. I wanted to talk to you about like the con like the podcast about, um, you know, kind of why we started it. I remember yeah. you. I loved your melt your your comment about you know we always had this idea or we always had really great conversations with other people. So can you tell us about that really quickly? Yeah, so I, you know, you and I, we have, we wanted to start a podcast for similar reasons, but for separate reasons. You know, I really wanted to do a podcast because when I moved here to LA, I tapped into the most like amazing community. And Laura is one of the big people that really introduced me to like this big world of big thinkers, really. And so as, as like, as I just got more into my skin here in LA, I realized that the people that I was meeting had really amazing stories to share. And, and just like life tidbits and helpful information. So for me, it became a way to share people's like world. So it's like, you know, we had a friend that had like been in a cult and I thought that people need to learn about that type of stuff. And outside of learning about it through like movies like that, like giving these stories out to people as like an educational tool for people. 
So that was what it was really about. I remember making a little voice memo to myself about the podcast, like years before we started it and being like, I really want to start a podcast where, and I just kind of like stopped and I was, and I was just like, audio and I was like where we just talk about real shit you know well we're just talking about like real life things that happen and just like people's story that was my big motivation to just put out people's like experiences out into the world yeah yeah I think like podcasting is great way to give a platform where it's not maybe some platforms aren't there's no platform for those people to speak, you know, usually, you know, especially like in California, there's like, there's always a platform for like celebrities or like, you know, people that are really big and have a huge following of Instagram followers, which, which I think that is just, it's very pigeonholed, you know, and I think that there, there needs to be like a more way to tell honest stories for people that are like working in kitchens or like, you know, um, you know, right, people that are into journalism, like, how did they start their career? Or like, we had, um a great guest um so she was talking about her career and how she got into working with the la times like you know the journalist no one's re writing about the journalists who write about other people you know <laughs> so who's covering their stories like who's exactly. covering the of like of chef nicole gomez that is like cooking for these big celebrities and is in their kitchen and who's telling their stories so it was like it became like up to us to just tell their stories and to to share inspiration and to and to give people a dose of what the conscious kitchen means to us, because we'll go into that. But the conscious kitchen has such a meaningful thing to Laura and I. Yeah. And so, so basically, when we finally were like, okay, let's do it. It was December of 2018, I believe. It was just like December of 2018. And we were like, we were, it was about to be 2019. And then that, and then three months prior, three months later, I ended up moving to Spain. Mm -hmm. And throughout that whole, like the whole two years I was living abroad a away from Liz, um, mm -hmm. we, we, we like did it globally. We did it through internet. We did it through, you know, guests going to, you know, Chinatown where Liz is living in LA and we just made it happen. So, you know, there was no excuse for us not to do it. Yeah. So we and finally he just got our, the balls to do it and we did it. Yeah. And then when then the, the big question was, and which is a big question for you to ask yourself when you're developing your podcast is yeah. what is your podcast going to be about? Who do you want to listen to it? And, and how are you going to get them to listen to it? So for us, it was like your, your name, right? What's yeah. your name? And can, should your name should reference, you know, it's good if your name can reference something or if it's just, you know, something that is important to you and you can kind of define that. So Laura, tell us about the conscious kitchen, what it meant, that name and just yeah. getting and deciding on that. Yeah. So it's really funny because a lot of our guests that don't know who we are, uh, or talk about who we are like they think that we write we talk about food because we're in the kitchen which is like the far furthest away of what that means about from the conscious kitchen the conscious kitchen was basically you know liz and i living in the same household for how many years being being roommates being best friends and like always congregating in the kitchen and mm -hmm. I, I think that's where it all, always like the heart and soul of every house is in the kitchen you know it's always you know it's always a place to gather a place for warmth a, a place for nourishment so we'd always end up finding ourselves in the kitchen talking about all these conscious social political crazy events or life that life things that happen um you know in the world whether it be from politics to things that happen to us in the day just always very conscious woke very aligned conversations that were very soulful to us and then so liz's husband boyfriend at the time chris who is a really like amazing force in our life. He was like, man, this is the conscious kitchen. The conscious kitchen is getting live again. Like the conscious <laughs> kitchen, like the conscious kitchen. So it was really just a very organic, funny title that we could never really get away from, yes. you know? And, and then Liz, Liz came up with our slogan, um, mm -hmm. where what's, what's our slogan, Liz? Uh, cooking up conscious conversation. So last, last season for season three, we had decided, you know, maybe, maybe we should change our name because our guests keep thinking that we're cooking and that yes. we're about food. So we brainstormed for like two weeks and we came up with all these cool names and we ended up having some really good ones. And, and then we sat on it. And then I realized but Conscious Kitchen, we both realized that Conscious Kitchen means so much to us and it's unique to us, right? But how can we, how can we really make, drive the point home that we're not talking about cooking? And that was coming up with a tagline. So for us, it'd be cooking up conscious conversation so now it's like yes we're cooking but we're not cooking food we're cooking up conscious conversation yeah 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And um, yeah, so, you know, um, so we came up with the name, mm-hmm. started doing our first episodes, and we wanted to create a category. So once you create a title, which we went with, Countess Kitchen, um, yes. you're always going to have like a category, and our category was self-development. And, mm-hmm. and the reason why self-development was so important to us is because that we're in this ongoing process of constant learning, constant networking, constant growing our community and network. So I think that's, you know, very, it's a perfect category for our podcast, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think too that because we're sharing so much inspiration, the inspiration will basically encourage you to grow. And so it's very like self self self-improvement and just listening to other people's like experiences, you're going to gain so much from it. So that's kind of like how we chose that that particular category. So choosing your category will be important. You can always go and change your category once like your once your podcast is live, you decide that you want to. Um, But yeah, that's like that's definitely one of the important parts. So I'd like to chat a little bit about um, starting a podcast like the questions that people need to like ask themselves right so it's like really like who who, like who is your podcast going to be for and why should they be listening to this and what was your cover art going to look like and your song or your jingle these are all little things that that you don't have to start off with but knowing that those are things that you're going to need down the line will be super helpful you know because your podcast you want it to be engaging you want people to like you know know who you are listen to your bio when you first start recording so having like these little jingles and just having like your cover art that that really portrays your podcast as how you are, you want you want that to be like something that's strong. And Laura and I, Laura usually handles all the graphics. She's kind of our graphic queen. If you ever want to know anything about graphics, you should definitely hit her up. She's a, she is your girl for sure. So she's always our cover art. And we started with a really cool piece of cover art from Tyler Spangler, right? From The Conscious Kitchen. It was super like trippy and it was really cool and we loved that. Then we switched over to follow the trends, right? Because there was a lot of trends in podcasts with doing the little graphic animations of people. So then we did that. And then we're like, oh, you know what? This graphic animation, like, let's follow the new trend. So always watching the trends is super important. And the new trend became very up close, seeing the person's face and then Laura spearheaded that and we changed our our cover art once again yeah i really love like you know seeing that you know who we are also having like bold colors because there's hundreds and thousands of podcasts like titles and obviously if you're a new uh listener you want to see like a podcast cover that's captivating that's bright that's welcoming so and also seeing that we are of color you know Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the podcasters are very mostly caucasian um you know and me and liz are you know latin filipino american so you know if you want to feel like maybe a closeness to someone that's more that has that has more of an ethnic background or anything like that like you can kind of relate to us through that so i think it's great to see our face personally and and see that you know we're uh, a partner duo podcast so yeah yeah Yes. And when we were thinking about who we were, who were we going to reach with our podcast, it's just, we knew that we, we just want to, it's our, our, who we wanted to reach is a little bit broad, but if you're able to figure out, okay, who, who am I really trying to reach? Am I trying to talk about like cooking? Am I trying to talk about like self-improvement? Am I doing like wellness? Am I doing like mentoring? Any type of topic that you want, it's out there on, on podcast world. So you can totally create, there's so many opportunities to just like, you know, create whatever it is that you're really, um, really attracted to or really, you know, feel impassioned by. Yeah, that's great advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So those are those good little first tidbits. Mm-hmm. So next, let's get into starting your podcast. So to start, you're going to need to reach out to guests. So Laura, you can talk to this part, part about reaching out to, to friends, how we originally started our, our outreach. Yeah. So when we first started the podcast, um, you know, I mean, we're starting. So when you're starting some, especially something from scratch, it's kind of hard to find those resources or finding a network of people. But luckily, you know, we lived in um, Los Angeles and there's a plethora of art, art, artists, music artists, you know, designers, um people and culture you know so it's great so we had like already a a huge network of friends that were also in a profession you know longer than six plus years so they had enough experience to share their trials and tribulations and failures and and successes so you know 
um, you know, for our first our first episodes, we reached out to a really good friend of ours who um, is um, a clinical um, psychologist, uh, yeah. Leah Mankow. Shout out to her. The what's her Instagram name? Alyssa Marie Wellness. Alyssa Marie Wellness, who is a huge, huge um, self help guru now on on Instagram, which is great. So we reached out to her, and that episode did really well. Um, and, and, and we just kept reaching out to friends, friends that, you know, that have so much information to share and for people just to get free knowledge and, and, and listen to their stories, you know, just to vibe. Yes. And I mean, and originally we were inspired, this cat is such, so needy. <laughs> <laughs> so needy. So originally we were inspired by our friends. So for us, it was pretty easy to just feature our friends on the podcast. And, and so for the first probably season and a half, the first full season and maybe half of the second season, we just used all of our friends and reach and did outreach to our friends or people that 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 inspired us through our friends or people that we knew of. After that, after we reached out to our friends, which is a great idea, you guys should do that too. After that, we started developing, all right, let's let's cater this a little bit more. Who do we really want to feature on the podcast? So we started doing our own very organic outreach and that is really sliding into people's dms yeah a little bit going on their website getting their email like really diving in and being like okay we really want you to be on our podcast but how but how you reach out to them is so important right you want to be appreciative of their time you want to be flexible with them you want to answer all their questions and beyond that something that really helped us was we had an amazing girl christina who's been working with us for two seasons and she was she created a beautiful deck for us for our podcast and that deck really helped us be able to just send that to a potential guest and then they know what we're about it's quick it's easy it's nice and like you know clear so that is a good idea maybe like create a brand deck for yourself noting your name your mission give yourself a little bio and that brand deck will also come in handy for brand sponsorships which we'll talk about later on yeah so you know getting you know programming these people you know scheduling with them you know setting a great time sending the link to your zoom call or you know just easy tips on just recording which is really helpful and you know just getting pe getting people on the podcast and creating as much content as you can you know i we would suggest you know recording at least three episodes before actually releasing your your podcast so people can get like an understanding about what what kind of titles and what kind of subjects and like what's the vibe of this podcast for them to subscribe right because you at the end of the day you want people to subscribe leave reviews so you can start charting on apple podcasts, Spotify podcasts, Google podcasts, all that, I will, all those things. So, you know, make sure that the podcast isn't going to be the perfect recording and it's not going to be the perfect content and the perfect title, but you learn as you go, you know, you yeah. learn as you go and each episode gets better and better from the first. Yes. <laughs> so that's just the reality of creating a podcast. You know, you just have to just try it and just maybe suck at it for the first time, but just try it, you know? an example of like a podcast evolving over the years like listen to our first episode and just yeah. listen listen to our last episode episode one and episode 29 and you could just see the differences how laura and i have evolved as hosts and as as podcasters in general so i'd love to know because laura took took care of all this aspect of the of the podcast which is launching on anchor and spotify can you tell us about why you should an launch on there and how the distribution works well, yeah, I mean, uh, what's a great free platform? Anchor, who's uh, under Spotify, is a great is a great place. It's easy. It's unlimited hosting, and it has distribution to all the channels. And that all the different channels that you want to distribute on are like everywhere or anything streaming, like anything or anything you can listen to, like anything at all. So that's like, you know, Google Podcast, that's um, Spotify, Apple. The most listened to one with that we studied is basically going to be off of Apple Podcasts. That's where I think people are the most active. The most people are subs like sub get subscri want to subscribe and listen to and get notifications also when you get a new podcast that releases because you want to be able to see when new episodes drop, right? It's like Netflix, like, oh, hey, your new, you know, this movie just released. It's like, you want to get notified. So I think Apple is the leader. And I think Spotify is second to that because Spotify is like trying to dominate now. But I mean, Apple's where it's at. So if you want to just launch in super easy, Anchor. Yeah. yeah. Anchor. And then that'll, that, that you connect Anchor to Spotify and to, and to Apple, and then it just automatically populates. But you have to yeah. touch. So it distributes. 
yeah, so it distributes. But another reason why I think Apple just generates more listens uh, via podcasting is because they're like not paid for platform, right? So Spotify, you have to pay have a subscription to be able to like listen through there. So yeah. it becomes a little bit like more difficult. But you want to you want to be streaming on any places you can. If you're gonna put it out there, upload it to so you can stream on Stitcher, on Google Podcasts, on Anchor, just on all of them. Yeah, and so what there's you- a Zencaster too is that tied to this as well um so so this is another subject recording okay. so you know where to distribute you know where to to lot to up, upload it's like youtube you upload your video um and yeah so basically what you want to do for recording this is another subject just like you know where to distribute now anchor.com um and no so for recording i think that's the i think that's the most difficult part of the podcasting journey <laughs> and if you want to be a podcaster is like recording and obviously you want it to be good quality and also editing that is to, to that is after 30 episodes me and liz understand the difficulties of editing a podcast you want to sound good you want the quality to sound good you want the editing to be precise you know you want everything to be very seamless but it takes time mm-hmm. so what i with with some research um we learned that zencaster uh z-e-n-c-a-s-t-r is the easiest um, to record on one platform. So you can edit it and record it all on one. And yeah, um, yeah. so Zencaster, for, if you want to start a podcast, that's like the first one to, you know, for baby steps. And so for those, so basically if, if you're stream, so if you're doing it through Zoom, Zencaster will catch the audio for you? Oh, I actually, no, but we could talk about another recording option, you know? Okay, all right. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Uh, we're talking about um, starting your own podcast. So tips and tricks on just how to, how to do it and how we started with our, our podcast. Mm-hmm. And we've already met a few things, which is developing who, who, who your listener is, who your demographic is, working on your cover art, your jingle. So you can always reference this again um, and just watch it all over again. But yeah. Very cool. All right. And then, so there's another note too. You have to be adaptable with podcasting when originally we used to do our podcast laura was in spain so we would form like laura a madrid time but then our guests used to come to my place in la and into our little studio and we would record with them but once the pandemic hit we were like oh well, we obviously can't have like you know friends come and 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 uh and be at our house so laura and i had to think quick like all right how are we gonna keep the podcast going so we're like well we have our our our, te- our sound technician and Laura's <laughs> Laura's boyfriend who does like all, who does like all of our like you know little audio stuff and is like the best and so he was like well you can just like call them in through Zoom and we're gonna call everybody in through Zoom and then we're gonna pull the audio from there and and we quickly formatted that sometimes you don't have to have like the best audio people don't have to have mics and our guests they record the voice memo app on your phone is actually really good it actually yeah. captures good quality audio if you're in a room that is not doesn't have high echo so if you go into a room that it sounds good that audio will sound super good on on your podcast too so we have our guests talk into their phone and then they have their headphones on and we're doing and we're talking to them through zoom but only the phone is coll- is collecting their audio and then we use that audio for the podcast laura and i use professional mics but hey, if your guest doesn't have a professional mic, they can just do the same thing we're doing and have a great outcome. Yeah. So yeah, that's a great tip, Liz. Um, recording with what you have, use what you have. I'm sure you have some of this stuff at home. You know, uh, you know, you obviously have a phone. Uh, you just use the, the, the notes recording um, on there. And also find a room that has good acoustics. You don't want to have something that has echo and the, mute, the sound bounces back and forth, all these certain things. You want to get into a room. The best place to do a walk-in closet. Uh, a small bathroom mm-hmm. with carpet like you want to make sure that the audio sounds the best to make sure that the listening quality for any listener around the world is like wants to stick around to listen to your podcast so it's not just the content it's also the quality of the recording so yeah so, that, so that'll be helpful so for us now whenever we have a guest that's coming on like post covid since we had to adapt we we asked them to send us an audio sample from the room that they they plan on recording in so that we can listen to it and be like all right that sounds good or no can you try another room and then and then that's how we try to get like the best audio but sometimes we don't get the best audio but we have an amazing conversation so we got to use it anyway and that's just how it goes you know yeah yeah, yeah. that's great tips 
Um, so now for like editing the actual files, um, as I mentioned, you could use Zencaster, which is an easy way to, to edit and record Zencaster. It's, I, everyone uses it. It's like number one, I think you pay a subscription base or we do it like the, the harder way. Liz, can you tell us about how you learned how to edit podcasting and what software program to use? Before we jump into editing podcasting, I want to go back a little bit and I want to talk about like the programming and the organizing of like your podcast. Okay. You need to figure out what, what is the format of your podcast going to be? How long are your podcast episodes going to be? Are they going to be 40 minutes? Or are they going to be 15 minutes, an hour long? You got to decide how long it's going to be. And then are you going to do weekly or bi-weekly or are you going to be doing monthly episodes? Those are all super important questions to ask yourself because you want to be consistent. The way that your podcast may be found is if you're consistently uploading. So if you're saying that every Tuesday I have an episode, every two, that's, that's what it is. Be honest with yourself. Be realistic. If you can't do a weekly episode, then just do it once a month. Yeah. But consistency is going to be key. So um, programming and organizing your podcast, like writing questions ahead of time, r running them by your guests, scheduling pre and post show, right? So it's like when Laura and I are interviewing people, we don't want them some we don't want them to just come and just be like confused. We want our guests to feel super comfortable, right? Feel yeah, comfortable. We want it to flow natural. <laughs> yeah, we want it naturally. So we we usually do about ten questions that we plan to ask the guests. And we send it to them as like an FYI, like we would like to talk about these things. We might not talk about them all, but we'd like to have a flow of how we're going to do it. And, and this is like, this is what the flow will be. Sometimes you don't ask all the questions, but you got to like be good at navigating the conversation and just keeping it entertaining and interesting. So we run those questions by our guests, you know, just so that they feel comfortable and they know, and they're always super appreciative and they're always like super like glad that we're giving them those things. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, you know, it, um, and it's great because, you know, we try to ask like our guests, oh, do you have anything coming up, a new project that we can help promote? Or, you know, it's great for cross marketing, growing, growing your platform and growing new listeners and new listeners for them also. So it's a win win. I think podcasting is such a great, is a great, great platform, you know. So uh, before we before let's go back to the editing later, because we're right now we're on podcast insightful tips, right? So I'd like to talk about the equipment. You, so you touched on the equipment a little bit first. I think I, and Laura uses some really like high tech, like advanced like equipment just because like they have that for recording. But for me, like it was up to me to like find a mic that we needed to use. And so I have two different mics. I bought one like little cheap one for like $80. I think it was like 80 or hundred dollars on Amazon. And I don't remember exactly which one it was, but it had really good reviews. And I got like some insight from Russ. I said it was great. And then I have another, what's that? Is it like the, is it a Yeti mic? Yeti or mics too, right? Yeah. I have another mic, the Yeti, the blue Yeti. And that one works really well too. So I have these two mics and that's like what I use. But for you, there's so many, there's so many different first people that are starting, right? It's like, they can use the headset ones. They can use like the standalone ones. Those are all things that like, that you want to ask yourself, I guess. Yeah, I think starting off, like I think any microphone that's under $150 is a great way to start. I think so. And and again, and if you can't afford that, then just do the voice and your app and like yeah. and just get the best sounding audio quality that you can. And then once your episode has been recorded, then we go into like the editing, right? And so yeah. initially, Russ, Russlin used to work, work on our editing for us and him and Laura would sit down and it would take you guys about like two, three hours, right? in the beginning and then like little by little it, it kept you know evolving and so now i do the the, ed the first round of editing and then i send it to laura and russ and they make it sound beautiful and fine tune it and i know you so laura you asked um what how it's been learning that i mean i think i like editing the podcast it's like it's it's a fun part of doing it because then you're able to like edit out little things like like if anyone says like, um, or if anyone like, you know, yeah. you know, like those type of things, like we're able to edit that out. So it's yeah. like, or if someone needs to take a, if someone has a pee break, you know, oh, yeah. it's okay to just have some silence and, or someone sneezes or someone coughs or someone, it's okay to take all this stuff out. Um, and I, I, if it's unnecessary to podcast, you don't need to put it, you don't need to add it in there. Or even if your podcast is running too long and maybe something doesn't even need to be included, like you can edit that out. Right. Yeah. Because I think like, I think some of like the best, 
there, there's just so, there's so many different formats, right? Whether it's an hour long episode or 40 minutes or 30 minutes, like we just, we decided 40 minutes was a good like slot for us. And it's been, it's been going well. So we really try to like keep our episodes to like 40 minutes, sometimes they're an hour and that's okay. But the editing is like, it takes long. And that's the part that everyone is gonna be doing it differently because we know one of our guests, Ali Tate, from season two, she also has a podcast and she edits her podcast through GarageBand. And and she's like, yeah, it's easy. Like, you know, she likes it, that's what she uses. So that's really, so that's really cool. That works for her. Yeah. Laura taught me to you to, to do it through, through um, I edit it through Ableton and that's how I'm editing. And it takes, it took me like six or seven hours to do the first one. Yeah. It, so long and as I keep doing it and as you keep doing it it gets quicker and shorter and then you learn all the hot keys and before you know it you can edit an e a 40 minute episode and maybe like an hour and a half or maybe two and the time just kind of keeps cutting down so the editing the editing you'll have to decide what what platform is the best for, for you but GarageBand is free it's on your it's on it comes with your Mac laptop so that's a great place to start yeah yeah definitely those are great tips I mean I would definitely say you know you know, you can, yeah, start with Zencaster, move to, move to GarageBand. And if you want to get really advanced, go to Ableton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those are like, I think the premature steps. So. Yes. Yes. I think Ableton is definitely like the, 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 the more complicated of the three. So work your way up for sure. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously if you want to have the best quality, you know, I mean, just play around with every play around with it first and then maybe in your second season or maybe in your 14th episode you're like okay I really want the quality to be 10 times better let's move over to GarageBand or let's move over to Ableton and hey I have a bit more of a bigger budget now I could get a bigger, better mic so yeah. you don't need all the fine dope equipment yeah. right off the bat like it's okay start with what you have I think that is the biggest takeaway from this pod this the segment is use what you have yes, you <laughs> And I think if you have, if what you have is time on your hands, then do it all yourself. But if what you have is money on your hands, then maybe you can hire someone and you can have someone do it for you as well. And I think Fiverr is a great place to find people. I don't, I'm sure that there are some people that edit podcasts on there. Yeah, sure. yeah. There's tons of people that you can go on Fiverr. It's uh, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R, and you could find people to edit your podcast. You could find people to make um cover out artwork for your for your time for your artwork for your podcast you can do find everything on on people on fiber mm -hmm. um so yeah there's pretty much you have no excuse to not start you know <laughs> um just, just, you're standing in your own way that's like the the, the main part but well, next we'll get into uh recording your first episode laura okay yeah so i know you oh no you have some notes here about about being nervous. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so um, so if you've actually never sat down and talked to a mic before, like, it's okay, practice makes perfect. If your voice sounds a little shaky or nervous, remember that improving um, your confidence on the mic takes a lot of practice, you know? So, you know, I learned a lot from listening to other podcasts. Thank God for other people that have, <laughs> have, have you know, 300, 400 episodes in. So it's really great to just take reference um, of your own unique voice and also reference from all these experienced podcasters, you know? You don't have to sound like a radio host that has like, hey, welcome to the podcast. Like, no, that's cheesy. So just listen to your own intuition and just talk like you're talking to a friend. But make sure you're very concise and to the point and you know, you're not dabbling so much that people just want to fall off the podcast. So you want to keep it exciting. You want to keep it interesting. And, you know, um, from, from the first episode to our 30th episode, you see the tra trajectory of improvement, small improvements, tweaks, you know, everything changes throughout like each episode. So don't beat yourself up. And if you fuck up on a recording, you could always go back and edit any of the voice edits. Like there's opportunity to use as much as girls are photoshopping pictures on the internet. You could photoshop your voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally edit that. Like, yeah. I mean, and that's a good like recording tip too, for that when you're recording, it's good to tell your guests or tell yourself, like, if you, if you, if you mess up on something, it's okay. Stop, 
and say it say it over again so yeah, that yeah. you can, editing you can clip out that piece and you can just like have that for, that that full thought yeah i love that and you know i feel i feel more confident when i'm interviewing other guests because when i do the actual research and like deep research about the guest itself so you feel more vibey you feel a more natural conversation with someone you want it to flow you want it to be you know just natural like you're talking to a friend like you're like you know you know that's why our podcast is called the conscious kitchen um because it's just a conversation you're having with a friend in the kitchen mm -hmm. a family member it's like oh my god this happened to me today like oh my god what happened to you like no just the constant I mean bantering the natural bantering you have with your your guests you know so yeah yeah Awesome. Yeah. So a few little things that I have to touch on what Laura said that it's like, okay, if you're nervous, if your voice is shaky, something that I something that I always do is I like to like warm up like my voice. And oh, that damn. Is, I didn't know you do that. Yeah. Before before we record, I just like I go down to like my little recording studio for like 10, 15 minutes before. And I just like say random things into the mic. <laughs> and That's I awesome. Like, I'm just like, oh, welcome. And I'm just like talking and I'm just like saying things just to kind of like warm up my voice. Yeah. Like drink, drink some warm tea before too, just kind of like get it all like warm and and then just practice into the mic. And then I, before we actually record, I delete all those clips. That's why you never know. <laughs> and then, and then like, and then we actually start recording. So that's a good tip. Just warm up your voice, practice a little bit, you know, say some little things, ask some of your questions even so that you feel, so that you feel like prepared for it. Yeah. Read your intro, all that stuff is super helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Podcasting is a lot of work. I mean, if you want to start a podcast, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, it's a lot of work. But the point is, is like preparation. So you need a whole day, even a few hours the, before you record the, record the podcast to prepare. So when you feel more prepared, you have more confidence to deliver, a, to deliver a great podcast, deliver a great message to the to the listener just like you just feel more powerful when you practice so that's good good tips liz yeah on, good good tips on voice pre warming and also tips on you know being prepared yeah just being prepared yeah we, we really prepare you, you know laura and i write our intros like if it's a guest that she's really like like you know um she knows a lot about Laura will write the intro and if it's a guest that I'm bringing on I'll write the intro and we'll run it by each other and we'll like make edits so we do a lot of we do a, a good amount of preparing because we want we want the, the episode to go smoothly we want like our guests to feel like oh dang these people are like they're legit like they know what they're doing because we are <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I think after 30 episodes and a lot of like fuck-ups like we kind of figured it out <laughs> But I think oh. the hard part now is like competition. There's just so much pod podcasting now. It's like, it'd be yeah. great if we started like six years ago, like Joe Rogan, I, where he I got know. paid like 13 million or a hundred million dollars from Spotify. Maybe, <laughs> but you know, it's never too late to start, whatever. Yeah, we weren't the early adopters, but it's fine. It's like, this is where we're at. We're building something from scratch. We're doing well. Hope that it's like, it keeps getting better and better every season. So, um, so yeah, and, and with that, and with that note, like for us, like we're always trying to get better as podcasters as well. And leading the conversation is always one of like the important parts of like learning as a host. Yeah. Leading, like, so sometimes like certain guests, like they might ramble and like, you know, they, they're not used to being on a podcast where you have to, where you, where it's better if you give kind of like good, good answers, but like not super, super lengthy ones. Right. So you got to find like the right points to like navigate the conversation back to where you want it to go or to bring people back or to just learning how to lead the conversation. And that takes some confidence. So yeah. boosting your confidence, work on like boosting like your voice and knowing like, you know, feeling confident that when you're going to try to ask a question or lead the conversation that you can do that. Yeah. Love that. Great tips, Lizzie. Yeah, yeah. And then um yeah, those are all. Did you have any other did you have any other little tips for when you're actually recording that first episode? Um I don't know. I think I gave my little ins and outs, but um you know, my favorite part of the podcast is also yeah, just you know, introdu introducing the, the guest, right? Yeah. Preparing who they're they're it, who they are, you know, pull the information from their bio on the internet, whatever you can. And also, you know, I like I really love a jingle so we first started like a jingle being like 
hey welcome to the conscious kitchen podcast like this is who i am laura laura like laura blah 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 and liz is like hey this is liz this is what i'm really knowledgeable at like things like that and that was really cool yeah and and then you know second here comes season three and I was like, you know what, let's make the podcast a bit more fun. If people yeah. want to know more about us, they could just go on our website, ConsciousKitchenPodcast.com and, and learn about us through our bio. Make sure you have a really good uh, website that people can contact you. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's a little further, but yeah, this, the, the reason was like, I really wanted to create a jingle and something that's just more fun and lighthearted, kind of like when you hear a commercial to like a cereal, a new cereal, or like a jingle to like a, a really cool radio station, or like a jingle for like a supermarket, stuff like that. So um Can we listen to it? Let's listen to our first one and then let's listen to our to our our, our current one. Do you have it? Yeah I have it here. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. Make sure it's loud so people can hear it. Hey guys, welcome to our podcast, <laughs> The Conscious Kitchen. I'm Liz, a 21st century hippie, and by that I mean I'm into all things plant-based, eco-friendly, but I hug my laptop as much as I hug trees. That's great. That's great, Liz. It's kind of hard to listen to it, but it, that's our intro. So you kind of get a vibe of who we are. And then our second one, our latest uh, jingle was from a really amazing singer, Jackie Mappe, a good friend of ours who's based in Sweden. She's like the most soulful, pop, eclectic, like Lauren Hill vibe singer in Sweden. So I was like, hey, my boyfriend made a beat. Would you love to sing on this verse? And it's mm -hmm. just about, you know, uh, it's just so vibey. You know, it's like, can't just get ya. Hey, that Liz, one. Liz will play it. <laughs> you know the jingles vibey and, and you want it to be something people can remember you know and it kind of and, and having that unique intro and jingle differentiates your, ourselves from other podcasts so, and I think that's what's special about about it and and maybe for season four we'll have something new who knows <laughs> who knows who yeah knows? <laughs> yeah well, I'd love to keep my pay I think it's a great intro for us for now and but you know, but like, but like we said, it's always important to be watching the trends and what are what's what are what's going on with people's podcasts and maybe eventually jingles won't be a big thing. Who knows? You know, just kind of keep catching, keep keep understanding the different trends of what's working in the podcasting community because that's going to continue to change. Yeah, yeah, yes. um, and I think that's it. So I think it's great just to have a jingle, you know, have something that people can remember by, and and then something also unique to our podcast is that we want to get the community involved. So we have a segment called new that's called the hot tip. Right, Liz, tell Can you tell the people about the hot tip? Yeah, so the hot tip is, is, is a fun and, and idea Laura came up with that is basically having listeners and just our, our, our audience send us tips like hot tips about like life tips. It could be anything really. Laura has a really good example. It could be about conscious. It could be about like, I don't know, ways to recycle, but it could also be something as quick as like, um, you know, Laura had an example of tell tell us like the the cracker one. Is it cracker? Oh uh, yeah, uh, no, I heard that actually from NPR. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that tip that was like a funny tip. But those are just the type of tips. Anything you could send about. Well. Yeah, so it just kind of gives that little incentive for you know like how people used to leave you know um, testimonials for like radio stations and stuff like that like back in the nineties. So it's people can call in, leave their tip, and we'll add it to the end of the podcast. So. It just brings in that element of just our listeners and how important our listeners are to our podcast and just, yeah, community is so important. So that really makes our podcast really special. Creating that community and already we have like some tips from, uh, from Align With Wit who gave you some, some like positive affirmations. We had another one from, uh, from Zandi who gave us a Reiki tips on just like connecting with yourself and self care. So we look forward to seeing any other ones that come through. If you have any hot tips for us, life tips, love tips, whatever tips you want to share with, with the world, you can email us at 
hello.consciouskitchen at gmail.com. And if you don't remember that, visit our website, consciouskitchenpodcast.com, and all the information is there too. Yeah. But, and last but not least, remember to, you know, get your podcast out there, you know, uh, listen to other podcasts, but also just get your podcast on everything, you know. Um, the platforms are Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, Google Play Store, and also upload your videos. If you get, if you record any videos through Zoom or, you know, Google, upload those videos onto YouTube because that's also a great way for people to ca catch the vibe of the podcast visually yeah. through YouTube. So we're also on YouTube. You can catch us on there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, there's ultimate ways of sharing. Thank God, you know, for all these platforms and social media accounts and all these things. So yeah, you know, um, but yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed these, this helpful, you know, 40 minutes, almost an hour of just how to start your own podcast and how our process and journey was, right? Yes, yes. And I think too, you know, there's so many things that we didn't touch on. Like Laura kind of touched on it a little bit, which is like creating promotional assets, like, you know, getting, getting the word out about your, about like your podcast. And that's, I feel like we might have to do a second one of that kind of dives in deep into, you know, the the day to day of podcasting. So if you have any particular questions, Laura is going to share this live via IGTV to our feed. So make sure to just comment and leave any questions there. And we'll consider the we'll consider that topic for our next live with Laura and Liz next Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. If you're interested in monetizing your podcast, I mean, we've done it. We've had three amazing advertisers that's really helped us, you know, put our money back into the podcast. So yeah, mm -hmm. tune in guys. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell your friends about the Conscious Kitchen podcast. You know, don't lose the gift of listening. Don't lose that gift and keep in touch with us. Yeah, yeah. Follow us at Laura Fama. Tell us like things. Let us know if we can ever be of any help to you guys. And leave us some reviews if you already have loved The Conscious Kitchen. Our latest episode is with Liz Hernandez. It's a beautiful episode and we're releasing season four in May. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, Liz. Love ya. Uh, Bye. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Bye.